what is up everybody welcome back to another episode of I find random pieces of tech and I try and make a repair video out of it because content I guess and only repair it to my incredibly low standards and today we have a TAC 4010SL reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder or open reel if you prefer um, and this and this is a tape deck that I had found um, while I was up in up on up um, cleaning up the house in the trip vlog. Um, this is kind of one of the first pieces of tech that I found on like the first day there and been always wanting to get into stuff like this so I took it and it seems to be pretty good. I have it I found a lot of info on it online um, and yeah I found the belt kits for it. Um, now I'm filming this intro long after I've done the job um, and yeah but I guess we will go back in time and um, go to the actual job. Um, so, yeah. So, I did have an original intro for this one, but it was so poorly filmed that I just didn't take it too much. So yeah, this um, this reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder it has all the stuff for an um, early 70s model. Um, you know, it's standard doesn't have any noise reduction obviously because that wouldn't be a thing until like the early 80s um, but yeah and it was working perfectly or it does work perfectly except for the two except for the fact that the um, except for the fact that the belts didn't work which is kind of standard for stuff the this um, these days so um, yeah um, bit about this thing it has the two spindles are um, they're they're on a direct drive system, but unfortunately they're not as regulated. So what they did, so what the people at TIAC did to make this thing actually work and you know run it at a regular speed is they made is they put the pinch roller and flywheel under a belt, and uh, like right around here is another motor which drives this the aforementioned flywheel. Um, so yeah, basically, um, the where we're gonna where we're gonna pick up um, on on today's video will be me trying to get the belt from there to there. Um, yeah, there's usually also a second belt going from spindle from the second spindle all the way up to the tape counter, but for some reason, all the ones they usually use the smaller belts, and those smaller belts are usually much better for um for it and um yeah there's also a bit of a there's also another video up up here on youtube where it's the a model i don't know what the hell the difference is well, actually there isn't really much of a difference it's the exact same model um the a4010 which is more readily available online um and is the exact same thing but yeah so it's there, but I'll link it in the description. Um, this has this has other problems other than the belts. Um, most notably, the um, uh, the pinch roller um, tire. It it does need to. It doesn't. The solenoid that controls whether it's being tensioned or not is not clicking in, which is not a problem of the solenoid. It's because the mechanism itself is frozen. I haven't. I didn't. I'm not. I'm not fixing it in today's video. Um, Unfortunately, because I, cause it's a bit of a, it's a bit more of an involved repair. Um, but you know, but I'll link the, in the description um, a video on how to fix that as well as the belts. It's kind of a bit better than mine, I think. Um, and I think everybody's been every video I've seen on this thing has been linking to that exact repair video. Um, but yeah, but enough of my um, random talking. Uh, let's get right into it. All right, so here we are with the um, the um, machine itself. Um, so yeah, to start off, um, note the fact that um, the two that the two segments are um, completely in completely different segments. So you got your deck up here and the um, the amp down here. Um, the reason why they did this is actually because. These two things are actually separate units, but they're all together. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you don't need to access down here. Um, if you need to look at the 
units kind of separately. Back behind it is a bit of piece of wood and you can just unscrew it. And there's, again, this is one of those products with the many tutorials on YouTube and yeah. So what I'm doing here and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking off the faceplate, um, this um, big piece of metal here. Um, if you go through the back, you won't find anything except the terminals for the motors and all the electronics that make this thing go. Um, you know, so there's four screws up here and there's quite a few hidden behind the actual reels themselves, behind the actual turntable reels as they call them in the manual. And yeah. Now in my case, I might not even do the, um, belt for the, uh, for the tape counter because mine is actually in pretty is pretty okay with tension but, but yeah um, like I said the camera battery died unfortunately but yeah um, so it's very so it's kind of a self-explanatory ish repair um, one big thing one big word of advice that I've kind of heard from those who have actually done a repair like this and you'll probably find if you've been watching all these tutorials is to not touch any of the red screws None are here, but there are some underneath. In fact, um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of, um, I'm going to remove the faceplate for the, um, for the heads, and that's where you can find all of them. Unfortunately, though, I think I've turned, I've kind of stripped the screw a bit, which is a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, you will need to remove that at some point. Another thing is that there are a ton of screws hidden under these rubber parts. Um, so take, so you are going to want to deal with them. Remember not to really be, not to push them too much because then you'll just get it to spin and it'll be kind of annoying. But yeah, this is a bit, this is kind of the hard part about it, but you know, it's not the worst. And yeah. you can totally get away with stuff like this. It's a very straightforward machine, this, and yeah. But yeah, once you get past that, there are two more screws. So yeah, you also have one of these plate things, which I think is supposed to hold in the screws, but you know, there you go. So if I just click into that, and then undo this, So yes, there are screws on all sides of this, like that, and yeah, once you get them out, pretty effortless. But yeah, once you get this faceplate off, um, you'll notice all these screws up here. Don't mess with them. Um, because if you do, you'll mess with the alignment and the azimuth of your heads. Um, usually that is, usually the azimuth is pretty stable from the factory, so you do not worry about these screws. In fact, they're, in fact, the reason why they're red is because they're glued in place, so, you know, so this way you don't deal with it when you do stuff like this where you're servicing it. Um, one last thing before you actually get it off. Um, this comes right off, it screws off, and the, um, and the um, pinch roller tire, the capstan, it, it does easily come off. So you can just pop it off and there you go, you're in there. Um, so yeah, after that, it should be just a simple matter of getting the plate out of the way. Um, now that all these screws are off, um, yeah. We should be able to just get it off. Um, it is a bit harder to deal with, so in my case, I'm just kind of prying it up because it is recessed. It's not like it actually needs to be pried up, but it's just there's no easy handle for it. Um, ah, there we go. Clock that out. So there we go. So now, we are inside of the deck itself, um, and yeah, 
so I'll deal with that later. So it kind of looks a bit daunting at first, but it's not the absolute worst when it comes to doing a repair like this. Big thing is that your um, belt comes out of here and um, where you put it, uh, in fact, if you look closely, I'm not sure if my camera's picking up on it, um, there's actually two different slots for um, things. The top slot is a bit thicker and goes for the 50 hertz region, so if you're like in Europe, the other half of Japan, or anywhere else, um, you'd probably want to put it up there, and then there's a smaller 60 hertz, I believe. Um, in fact, let me go and consult the manual for things like that, but yeah. But yeah, if you get down here, then there's your big heavy flywheel, which does the speed regulation, and there's your pinch roller mech. Um, and yeah, whatever the pinch roller mech is doing is kind of based entirely on um, if you're, you know, you know, if it's going to put tension on it, it's probably because there's, because something's actually being played here and there's actual stuff going on because that should kind of clasp shut and it will, um, yeah, and the tire will do its thing. So yeah, so let's get right onto that. All right, so here we are on the back wood panel here. And um, yeah. And where I'm going to start out is we're going to remove this um, wood panel because this will be where you, where it kind of gives away that it's literally just two units in a really nice wood grain case. Um, so yeah, it's really simple. You just start removing the screws as always. There's about eight screws dotted around the edges and yeah. Alright, so this is our last screw, and there we go. Here's, so that's the MDF out the back, removed. Um, yeah, quite the build up, I guess. Um, so, now in this case, we're gonna want to have this whole area, this back plate removed, because this is where we have everything. Um, in fact, fun fact, this is the motor where everything attaches to. It doubles up as a fan, so that's why whenever you would turn this thing on and put it to, um, uh, what's it called, the, uh, it's called the high speed, um, seven, seven inch per second mode, it will, it will run a fan while you hear a fan noise because it's this motor kind of constantly running, um, but there's like some clutch somewhere that tells it, no, don't actually spin the pinch roller, um, because you haven't hit play yet. So here we are, um, it's all together again. I forgot to film any bits of it, um, but the belt is perfectly on there. It is perfectly tight. It is in the 60 Hertz slot. Um, one thing that I should probably note is that there is two different slots on each pulley um, of different sizes in a very strategic manner. Um, basically, if, it's, if you're in a 50 Hertz country, there is an there's an upper side and there's a lower side. Um, the instruction manuals for the A model, which is the one that's more documented than this, that has more documentation than this one, um, talks about it and goes into depth. Um, I couldn't find the manual for the specific version because I just have the just the 4010, but most of the stuff I found online was for the A4010, but it seems to be the exact same deck, but a few things are just more basic on the amplifier. So yeah, so yeah, basically, um, yeah. Now, there is another order of business that I keep meaning to address, and that is the fact that the, um, the pinch roller thing that makes it, that makes it actually grip onto the tape. Um, unfortunately, that's, um, that's a frozen mechanism. But I'm 
but it doesn't take much force to actually just manually click it up. It's a bit of an inconvenience to me, but eh, I guess. The way you go about fixing that is, um, in fact, I've I've heard of two ideas. In fact, um, the source that I'm linking in the description had the same issue with the A model, and uh, yeah, uh, there was a... Um, the method you included just either using heat, which is what he did because it's a bit quicker, um, or using a penetrating oil. I think WD-40 is a pretty good one on that one. Um, I would have done it, except I was like, eh, I'm a bit, it's a bit complex and I, and I don't really want to mess too far into the um, mechanism. I just want to get the belts in and we're good. Um, and that I did. So yeah. And yeah, the biggest problem really along the way was that there were a few stubborn screws that, yeah, I gotta get into it. But otherwise, um, so yeah, let's get it all reassembled. So we're mostly back together, and um, as you can see, I'm playing a tape. Currently, it's a bit noisy. Um, I'm not sure what's causing it. I think it's the reels, but you know, it doesn't seem mechanical. It's playing just fine. Unfortunately, I'm unable to verify it with this tape because um, this tape just so happens to be the um, just so happens to be the master tape to some advertisement, um, and. Generally, a lot of the um, ad the tapes for for doing um, masters were usually recorded at um, 15 inches per second, which is uh, not a speed that this tape deck supports because this only goes up to seven and a half. Um, so, what I'm doing here right now is um, I'm getting it on my computer at seven and a half inches per second and playing it and just recording it in into Audacity and. Um, yeah, and once it finishes, or once the spool fills up, because I think that's going to happen first, um, I'm going to stop the recording, speed it up, and see what's actually on it. Um, you know, simulate it, because usually they did it in stages where it would be two times slower, usually, as the tech progressed. So yeah, um, so it's 95% working. Again, I still haven't addressed the other issue. Um, Another issue did crop up. Uh, we did have, um, apparently the um, pilot light for power went out. Um, I'm not too concerned about it because it's got two more on the VU meters. I don't know. I mean, I guess it must have been a mistake that I did while doing stuff with it because I did kind of get a bit rough in there, so... 20% chance it was me. Hell, 90% chance it was me with my luck on these things. I'm pretty sure I'm going to get absolutely flamed in the comments for not looking at every issue and um, being as meticulous as normal with it. But yeah, anyways, uh, so it's okay, I guess. You know, everything's all pretty good. Um, on the stuff that I did here that was, um, that I can verify was recorded at seven and a half inches per second, it seemed, it sounded okay, um, didn't sound weird, but yeah. So, I'm going to go in and let, get this digitization job finished. Alright, so there we are. Um, that's the end of today's um, video. Um, so, yeah, the thing runs and it runs pretty well. Um, bit of a problem though that it just developed is that the motor is squeaking a bit. But that, but that can be easily fixed with sewing machine oil, which is something that I have an abundance of, and it's going to be a very common theme in the next video, where I'm actually going to be repairing another TAC um, that plays cassettes this time. So, yeah. So stay tuned for that, and um, stay on this video, because at the end, um, in the next few moments, we're going to be um, having we're going to be having um, digital recordings of the of the actual tapes that I've that I found alongside this thing. Um, a lot of these are probably lost media because I can't find any of the, um, any things that match up with the audio on these tapes, um, on the internet anywhere. Um, also they only play at 15 inches per second so it's going to be, so I'm going to kind of simulate it and have footage to simulate speeding it up. I mean, yeah. 
There's even some production music in this um, thing, usually like short little snippets for films and stuff. Um, but yeah, so if, you, if, my, if my video gets copyright striked, well, you'll, the tapes did it. But anyways, with that being said, um, yeah, so, so anyways, um, with that being said, if you like what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe. i probably going to do like a video or two more where it'll be like hi-fi audio and repair type videos. Um, there might be a couple, I have a couple more in the near future. Um, but most of my content is gaming type stuff, so if you like, so if you like random gaming videos, um, yeah, uh, that'll, you know, that's something I do as well. This, this content, this, this channel is, uh, everything kind of content, so, yeah. But anyways, that's it for today's video, and bye. Alright, so there we are. Um, that's the end of today's, um, video. Um, so, yeah, the thing runs, and it runs pretty well. Um, bit of a problem, though, that it just developed is that the motor is squeaking a bit, but that, but that can be easily fixed with sewing machine oil, which is something that I have in abundance of, and it's going to be a very common theme in the next video, where I'm actually going to be repairing another TAC, um, that plays cassettes this time. So, yeah. So stay tuned for that, and um, stay on this video, because at the end, um, in the next few moments, we're going to be um, having, we're going to be having um, digital recordings of the, of the actual tapes that I've, that I found alongside this thing. Um, a lot of these are probably lost media, because I can't find any of the, um, any things that match up with the audio on these tapes, um, on the internet anywhere. Um, also, they only play at 15 inches per second, so it's going to be, so I'm going to kind of simulate it and have footage to simulate speeding it up. I mean, yeah. There's even some production music in this, um, thing, usually, like, short little snippets for films and stuff. Um... But yeah, so if my, if my video gets copyright striked, well, you'll, the tapes did it. But anyways, with that being said, um, yeah, so, so anyways, um, with that being said, if you like what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe. I'm probably going to do like a video or two more where it'll be like hi-fi audio and repair type videos. Um, there might be a couple, I have a couple more in the near future, um, but most of my content is gaming type stuff, so if you like, so if you like random gaming videos, um, yeah, uh, that'll, you know, that's something I do as well. This, this content, this, this channel is, uh, everything kind of content, so, yeah. But anyways, that's it for today's video, and bye. 609B4. Sound 17. Ready, action. Instant Maxwell House announces its twin, decaffeinated Instant Maxwell House. It tastes every bit as good as Instant Maxwell House, but you just don't believe it could. Okay, try this. Compare them. Shut your eyes and sip one. And then the other. Oops. You'll see. Decaffeinated Instant Maxwell House tastes every bit as good. Because it's Instant Maxwell House decaffeinated. Right. Sound 195. All right, now everybody talk like real people now. Ready? Go. And cleaning's a great way to fight cavities. Gleam's terrific. Keep it. Thanks, I'll pay you back later. Laura, you forgot to brush your teeth. Here's some new Gleam, now go. Follow him? Cut. Excellent.